Hi guys, well in the first of our numerous X299 reviews we're going to be taking a look at a Gigabyte board today under the Aorus branding. This here is the Gaming 3. Now after testing a variety of different boards we actually chose to review KB Lake X with this Gaming 3 here as it gave us the best overclock out of the bunch. That just gives you a bit of an idea there of the caliber of this board. The Gaming 3 is the first board in the Aorus lineup and inside Gigabyte's entire product line it sits in a mid to high end type of position. We have all of the essentials on this board but since we are dealing with Aorus there are also some premium features placed in key areas. Now the current pricing for this board marks it out as sitting around about 259 in the UK and then if you're in the States it's going to be anything between 250 and 280 and so that shouldn't really come as any surprise since we are dealing here with the high-end desktop platform and within this platform this board here should offer us a good blend a good balance of features and performance so let's check it out okay so here is the Aorus X299 Gaming 3 and so we have a completely new design here and one which is opted for a neutral theme and so across the entire board we have just matte black being used with silver and white in specific areas and so if you are looking for something which has those clean aesthetics then this is definitely something to consider and of course not wanting to miss out on the RGB functionality Aorus has kitted this board out with LED customization the LEDs there are on the heat sinks PCI Express and audio sections and those can be modified using RGB Fusion the colors can be altered and the effects too and on top of that we have twin RGB headers on the board for use with RGB lighting strips and those are 12 volt and again you can customize those with the RGB Fusion software and so in that sense you can choose to create a colored theme if for example you want everything red or everything blue and the other thing to note is that this board does conform to the ATX form factor so it is going to fit inside most mid towers we're now going to move in for a closer look at the different areas of this board. So let's start at the CPU socket. So this here is the new socket 2066 supporting Intel's new Core X series. So that includes both the Skylake X and KB Lake X processors. Now if you do have a cooler which is ready for socket 2011 then you can use such a heatsink because the mounting screws that are in the corners they are the same diameter. So you won't need a new mounting kit for most CPU coolers. Now Gaming 3 utilizes a 12 phase digital power design and we have long life black caps used throughout which offer up to 10,000 hours. And another thing to note is that across this board we have server level chokes and digital power controllers. Now covering the MOSFETs up at the top there we have a single heatsink which again adopts that neutral theme and behind that top heatsink we have a single 8 pin connector for the CPU power. We also have two CPU fan headers by the socket along with a dedicated header there for the water pumps next to that 24 pin ATX. So including those we have up to 8 fan headers on this board which is definitely going to come in handy. Moving on to the memory area we of course have 8 slots which are all reinforced with steel and so in total we can utilize up to 128 gig over 4000 megahertz memory and use XMP as well. Now if you are going to be using a quad core KB Lake X then you will need to use these slots that are on the side closest to the 24 pin connector. If you install them over on the other side they will not be recognized. And also in this area here we have twin USB 3 headers for that front panel. Next up we have the storage which isn't short on options and so first of all we have 8 SATA 6G ports which should be more than sufficient for most users out there and then we have twin NVMe PCI Express Gen 3 X4 M.2s which will serve up some fast transfer rates of up to 32 gig a second and so for the storage there are plenty of options there. Behind these SATA ports we have the Intel X299 chip with a substantial heatsink sitting over it and you can judge by the size of that it is more than up to the job of keeping it cool. Moving on next we have the PCI Express region which is populated by 5 PCI Express 3.0 X16s and so you'll notice there are no X1s on this board and the modes for each of those X16s are 16 for the steel reinforced ones, 4 for the middle two and 8 at the bottom. Now for multi GPU configurations if you are using Skylake X on this board then you can go ahead there and use 3 and 2 way SLI and Crossfire while taking the 2 16 modes. However if you are using KB Lake X you will only be able to use 2 4 modes since KB Lake X is a 16 lane CPU. 
Now before we move on, there are two buttons at the bottom of the board which are labelled OC and PWSW. It's fairly obvious what the latter offers as it's just an onboard switch for the power. But that OC button there will adjust the CPU settings to their optimum for the specific config that you are using. Immediately next to the PCI Express, we have the audio components. With the Gaming 7 and 9, you get a plastic cover over this section here, but with the Gaming 3, these parts are just exposed. So, at the center of that audio solution is the Realtek ALC1220, providing you with 120 decibel signal-to-noise ratio. And as well as that, we also get these red Wema audio caps. Now one of the features which we found especially useful is the inclusion of Smart Headphone Amp which basically detects the impedance of your headphones or your headset and so the audio configuration will be adjusted there according to the spec of your headphones which you know, should help to alleviate those problems that you might have when you get really low volume. And all of the components here are isolated to prevent any electrical interference. Okay, and lastly we arrive at the rear I.O. section of this board and we have the following. PS2 keyboard mouse, 6 USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, all of those there are blue. 2 USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, those are in the Type A and Type C, those are coloured in red. And for wired connectivity, we have Intel Gigabit LAN. And then all of those audio jacks there for 7.1 surround. Now Gigabyte has always been behind Thunderbolt 3 and once again there is support here and that is via the USB 3.1 type C port. And it's great to see that USB 2 is completely removed from this back panel and even USB 3 as well. And so everything is to the very latest 3.1 standard. Okay, so there is the new X299 Aorus Gaming 3. And so in our summary of this board, we're not going to be reflecting on the X299 chipset as a whole. That's going to be covered there in the CPU review. But what we can say about the board is, you know, compared to others that we've had in to test, we were able to nudge up our Kaby Lake X CPU to 5.2 GHz, which represents around about 15% increase in the frequency, which isn't too bad at all. Some of the boards that we've had in to test they were able to just about get to 5, and so uh, gaming for here can be commended for the overclocking ability. So looking at the design, Aorus have kind of gone with quite a, an understated type of uh, styling there. Uh, isn't especially exciting, but what it does mean it's not going to conflict with any colours that we might be installing from your graphics card or your memory on this board. Great features on this board as well, looking at lots of fan headers. Uh, we've got uh, great storage, 8 ports should be enough, great audio configuration as well and all of those ports and lanes are reinforced, we've got an anti-sulfur design as well throughout. And two things which I think are really good and I'm really glad to see that they've done, they've ditched Killer LAN on this particular board and they've gone with that Intel controller. And the other thing, on that back panel we've uh, done away with USB 2 and USB 3 and so instead we've got 3.1 throughout the entire thing so you know it's high time that um, manufacturers kind of did this and phased out those older standards. So that just about covers our review of this today guys. I hope you did enjoy it, I hope we've uh, covered all aspects of the board. Be sure to check out the full review for all the benchmarks, uh, all the testing against those other boards that we've had a look at. Uh, be sure to continue watching our content as we're going to be bringing much more X299 uh, very soon. So take care and I'll see you guys next time.